morning. Welcome to Live of 585. We are in Acts chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 21 through 26 today. Acts chapter 1, verse 21 says, Therefore, of these men who have, been who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they uh, proposed to Joseph called um, Barsabas, who was the surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Um, they're in the upper room. They're waiting. Peter stands up. He gives this little speech about how, hey, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk going on amongst the 120 here in the upper room in regards to what happened with Judas about, you know, 43 year, or forty-three days earlier uh, in his uh, betraying Jesus and killing himself. And Peter gets up and he kind of sets things straight. He shares with them the truth of what happened. And they come to the conclusion using uh, two quotes from the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 69, verse 25, and Psalm chapter 109, verse 8, that they need to um, replace Judas. So Judas disqualified, dead now because he killed himself. Now we need to replace him. So how are we going to do this? Here the apostles are. They're gathered together in the upper room. And now they have a choice that they need to make. You know, up to this point, how did all the other apostles get picked? Jesus chose them. Well, now Jesus is in heaven. He's no longer with them physically on the earth. And this is kind of their first choice that they have to make. They want to choose who Jesus would choose. Jesus just isn't right there physically to tell them what the choice is. So how are they going to navigate? How are they going to figure out how to pick the one Jesus would want them to pick? Well, this is what they do in verse 21. Therefore, of those men who were accompanying with us at the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, they have a criteria. We're looking for someone to replace Judas. We're looking for someone who's been with us. We don't just want to pick some random guy from afar who has no clue what's going on. No, we want someone who's been with us and following Jesus all this time. You know, from in the beginning of his ministry with John baptizing him to uh, witnessing even his resurrection, as verse 22 says, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us and of his resurrection. We're looking for someone who was there early on. We're looking for someone who watched Jesus ascend into heaven. We're looking for someone who, and this is the purpose of him, to be a witness with us, Peter says, to his resurrection. We want another witness here. Someone who's seen the things that we've seen. Someone who's experienced Jesus in the way that we have experienced Jesus. So that's kind of their rough list of criteria. Now they're kind of looking around here in the upper room. You know, who, who applies to this? Verse 23, and they propose two. Two ideas come to mind. Joseph, whose surname is Justice, his nickname's Justice, and Matthias. Joseph, Matthias. These two guys fit the criteria. They're, they're great guys, most likely qualified guys. Which one should it be, though? They both seem like good choices. Which choice, Jesus, would you have us do? How do they discern? How do they figure out? Which one Jesus would pick? Verse 24. They prayed and they said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show us which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship 
from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. What do they do? They pray. Lord, here's what we got. Lord, this seems to make sense to us. Lord, here's what we're bringing up to you. God, what do you have to say about the matter? They have a choice to make. They want to be sure they make the right choice. Both of them are probably good choices. They want to make the best choice. They don't just want to choose the good thing, because both of them are good. They want to choose the God thing. They want to choose what God's will is. And, you know, so too in our lives, we have to realize that we're faced with many choices throughout the day, many choices throughout our lives, which ne both of them are good. Neither one is sin. Neither one is evil. Neither one is not bad versus good. It's good versus better. And it's like, Lord, which do I choose? Well, which do you want? Do you want good or do you want the best? Do you want just the good thing that God has for you? Do you want the best thing that God has for you? And the way that you can work through and sift through and make these choices is doing what they're doing here in the upper room. They're going to the Lord and they're asking him, Jesus, you're the one who knows the hearts of all men. Lord, show us which one of these guys would you have come and join us? Which one of these guys would you have replace Judas? And they pray. Lord, I'm faced with this situation, with this dilemma. I don't know if I should do A or B. You take it before the Lord in prayer. Lord, both of them seem good. Lord, both of them are good. But I know that you have specific stuff that you want to happen in my life. Which, which is the best? And they just take it to the Lord. And then they do this. This confuses some people. Verse 26. After they pray about it, verse 26, then they cast their lots. The lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Joseph, Matthias, which one? Pray about it. They cast lots. The lot fell on Matthias. Matthias gets chosen. This idea of casting lots is something that we see often throughout the Old Testament and once or twice here in the New Testament. It's a way that was used to kind of help discern God's will, this casting of lots, this kind of almost you could say rolling of the dice. People say, well, is that what we should do today? No, because get this, this is the last place in the Bible where we ever see this idea of casting lots being used to figure out God's will. Why? Because of what happens in the next chapter. Acts chapter 1 is the last place we see lots being used to determine God's will. You know why? Because Acts chapter 2 happens after Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 2, a very unique thing, uh, thing happens. You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit being poured out on believers. Now, as we see later on in the New Testament from this point forward, when we pray, we don't pray to discern God's will and then cast lots. Now we pray and we rely upon the guidance of the Holy Spirit to teach us and lead us into all truth. We no longer do this Old Testament thing. It's done away with after this point. From Acts chapter 2 onwards, when we have a question, when we have choices to make, we take it to the Lord in prayer we pray about it, and then we rely upon the guidance of the Holy Spirit that's in us and that's been poured out upon us, as we'll see here in Acts chapter 2, to, uh, to you know get us on the right path, to reveal to us what the will and heart and mind of the Lord would be. So, pretty straightforward thing going on here as we wrap up Acts chapter 1. Choices to make. So, do in our lives. We all have choices to make. What are we going to do? This or that, that or the other. Lord, some of them are big old choices. Some of them, not real big. But God's concerned with these things. Take them to him in prayer. Lord, which, which, should I, which should I do? Or both of them seem good. Then rely upon him. Pray about it. Then wait. Listen. You know, seek out godly counsel. Open up his word. You know, some stuff's just pretty cut and dry. Black and white, right out of here. 
That's going to answer your question right away. Other stuff, not nearly as black and white. Not quite as clear. Some of it, you have some freedom. Which do you want? You know, should I wear you know, red shirt or blue shirt today? God goes, take your pick. Wh whatever. That's not really a big old issue. You know, should I move here? Should I, uh, you know, get involved in this? Should I take that job? Should I, all of these bigger life questions, man, these are things we should be taking to the Lord in prayer and then not casting lots about them, but relying upon the Holy Spirit of God who's in us and has come upon us to lead us and guide us and teach us what Jesus would want. Because like these apostles, our desire should be, Lord, we just want what you want. Lord, if you want Matthias, let's do Matthias. If you want Joseph, let's do Joseph. Lord, we just, we're trying to figure out what you want here. Because And whatever it is, we're cool with it. Sometimes when we come to God with A or B, you know what he says? C. I didn't even know that was an answer. God goes, yeah, you're so focused in on thinking there's only two options. What if neither is the answer? Huh, that's kind of a far out concept. And it happens, you know, we, we get so, God, it's got to be this or that. God goes, no, neither one. Forget about those two things you've worked up in your head. Think about this one that hasn't even crossed your mind. And being open to this stuff, having an open heart and an open mind when we come to God in these things and say, yeah, Lord, I'm just here to be molded, conformed into whatever your will is in the situation that you're praying about. So this is actually really neat because what we're seeing displayed before us here is that um, God cares about our lives. And God um, wants to have input in your life. And what we need to do is ask him, is pray about it, is seek his guidance and get this. Then he gives it. When we seek his guidance, he gives it. And what we're seeing here is the creator of the universe concerned with which one of the two was picked. And so too in our lives, we have to realize that the creator of everything is concerned with our lives. And we have the privilege of being able to come before him in prayer and seek out guidance. And he gives it to us when we do. Sometimes you're seeking out guidance, you're not hearing, you're not getting direction. Wait, wait, wait. Try praying differently. Try thinking outside the box. Try some of this other stuff. But when you zoom out and understand the bigger implication of what's happening here, you realize that this is God involved in the lives of his people. And that's a neat thing. So often we're familiar with that as Christians, obviously, but we don't realize the awesome significance of that. God wants to be involved in our day-to-day -day lives. He wants to give us guidance. All we simply need to do is ask him, and he gives it. So today on this Wednesday, let's pray together that God would uh, be involved in our life today. That he would give us guidance for today. Lord, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with. And Lord, for this section in the book of Acts, as we see that now the early church has uh, picked Matthias, Lord, by your direction to replace Judas. And Lord, they come to that conclusion because they bring the choice to you. And Lord, I pray that in our lives, Lord, when we're faced with choices, because all of us are, Lord, we're faced with different things to uh, decide on and some big things. Lord, we know that you have a plan for our life. You have a purpose, God, that you want to be involved in our day-to-day -day lives. Lord, you want to put input into our lives. Lord, we just need to ask. So God, here we are on this Wednesday morning asking you, Lord, to uh, give us direction for this day. Lord, for some people out there right now that are faced with big choices, Lord, maybe they're thinking about moving. Maybe they're thinking about changing jobs. Maybe they're thinking about, uh, Lord, getting married. Lord, it could be anything. God, I pray that you would just um, soften their hearts to know that, Lord, if they come before you in prayer, search out your word, Lord, that you will reveal the right answer. Lord, that we can trust 
um, that we're walking in your way as your word continues to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So Jesus, thank you that you're concerned with our day-to-day -day lives and Lord, that we're able to come before you when we don't know what decision to make. And Lord, you can help lead us and guide us in those ways. So God, just be with us the rest of today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a good Wednesday. Tonight, we're starting uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 17, which is the famous story of David and Goliath. Such a good study. You know, many of us are familiar with it, but really good uh, stuff to hold on to. So join us tonight, uh, either here uh, in person at Calvary Chapel Salmon at 630 or here on Facebook Live or on YouTube as we look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and deal with that awesome event in the Bible known as David and Goliath. So hopefully we'll see you then.